All right, it's game time. Now, I had one little setback, something that I never, honestly, even, never even thought about, is originally these were planned for doing for some different uh, cooler uh, animals, like they're reptiles and stuff that didn't require a lot of supplementary heat. But the one thing I didn't take care of was the backgrounds. And now you can see now, I've got those cork backgrounds in place. I had to go to the city and pick them up, but they are ready to go. They've sat overnight, so they're fully cured. I've got tons and tons of our awesome substrate ready to go. As you can see, I've got all sorts of nice, this is all really broken down, rotted wood. This is the same stuff as I also have li uh, pieces that are still live that were soaked. All sorts of nice living mosses. We've got a few plants that we're going to be putting in the 36. I don't think I have anything small enough to go in the 24, but we're going to take a peek. We've got a couple of types of springtails. We've got whites and we've got peaches. Those are going to go in there. Now, you guys are wondering, what are we doing, Biggs? What are we setting up? Well, you guys, if you saw the video I talked about, about setting isopods up naturally, this is where the proof of the pudding comes. This is where I put my money where my mouth is, and I set these eyes guys up in a much more naturalistic way. So basically in the 36, and the, 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 I had a bit of a quagmire trying to figure out which species I wanted to put where. Now porcilios generally will do way better with a bigger space. They'll, their broods will be better, they can, de they, they can defend them better, the male's got more territory. Everything for a big Spanish porcilio would do great. So originally I had planned on putting my Hoffman Segai colony in there. They thrive and they do really, really well and I thought that would do great. And then I tossed and turned as to what I was going to put in the smaller one, or whether I was even going to do the smaller one at all. However, I put it in, if you guys saw the thumbnail, that's right, we have the tricolors. We have Merilunella tricolor. This is basically the, the probably one of the most coveted isopods out there right now. And I thought, well, I can't really go and throw them in the 36. You know, that just terrifies me that they would just vanish. There's one there in the upper right corner. They're all out, usually all out about and on the log. They were just, this is just the very temporary housing for them. You can see them all there. And I think I'm going to put them in the 24 inch. Still tons and tons of room. They don't need massive, and they're not a massive isopod. Now what to do with the 36? Now I was still on the fence about doing uh, my Hoffman Say guys, but honestly my Hoffman Say guys do really, really, really well in the setup that they have, which is one of these tubs. Now all those tubs, if you can see behind them, that's just a glimpse of what's to come. I have these new tubs that I've gotten and they've all started trickling and I got some new vents. That's another video coming up down the road. But I think we're just going to keep the Hoffman Say guys and put them into one of the new style tubs. I think it's going to work really, really well. So what's going in there? Well, also on that order, I don't know if I showed it or not on the video of the new isopods, but I ended up getting a couple of cultures of Porcilio Expansis. And these are the orange one. So I ended up getting two. Why did I get two? Well, you guys, if you followed me at all and you know about me with, a, with isopods, Persilio expansis is one of the only two isopods I have not had success with. And I actually know the individual that sold these isopods to my dear friends over at Port Credit Pets. So I know exactly where they came from. I know how they were cared for. And that's right, they were cared for in a somewhat nastristic vivarium. Here's the picture of what they came from by my good friend, Mr. Jeremiah Toole, who I've spoken about many times. So that's what we're going to do in that one. He's got him in a 40 breeder. We're going to put him in something almost the exact same footprint, natural style, lots of rotting wood, uh, lots of natural products, lots of natural mosses, get the plants going. I think it's going to look awesome. So let's get to it. Yeah. Here's habitat number one. This will be the habitat for the tricolors. So we've gone with that real organic, as you guys seen the substrate mix, we've talked about it a lot. We've got all these nice natural mosses and lichens. This piece here has been soaked, so all that live beneficial bacteria and microfauna contained within it 
will be contained and it will be, be able to go throughout the entire environment. These two pieces had a lot of rot within them, so there's the rotten wood component as well as all the products that are added into the substrate mix. Now the only thing that we've added differently than would be, say, like naturally found, was we added the calcium carbonate and we mixed it in with the substrate at the beginning. And so there is a bit of calcium carbonate mixed in because there is no rocks of any kind in here that uh, things would be slowly but surely breaking down and mineral, mineral would be leaching into it at a very minute scale. So I had to ensure that there was some sort of a calcium source for the animals in here within the substrate. So that is in there and that we will replenish periodically. But other than that, we've got the leaf litter side and the, instead of having a dry side and a wet side, it's got lots of different micro areas within the environment itself. So underneath this log, underneath this moss will be moister than say on top here or on top here. Everything right now looks wet because I just sprayed it. But overall, for textures, I think this is wonderful. So let's get the tricolors in here. Now we very well might put them in here and not see them for weeks or months until they finally get comfortable and established and then I think they'll venture out. I guess it's a bit of a gamble taking probably the, one of the most coveted, most uh, highly prized species right now and doing an experiment. But true to my last name, go big or go home. So enclosures and both the enclosures have full cross ventilation along the front with small enough screens that the animals cannot escape or their mankai. And the entire top is open screen, again, with small enough screens. Now, why I installed the cork at the back, it's a quarter inch thick, so it goes all the way up to the top. And I ran a bead of silicone along the top and it filled the gape, the holes that uh, would be at the back for the electrical appliances and stuff. So there's no room for escape. And I think these guys are going to absolutely thrive in here. the second one all done so we've got some leaf litter we've got a kind of a hollowed out rotten log opening here we've got some different types of mosses lots of microfauna you see the springtails I added there different types of moss there we added a couple of types of ferns this is a rabbit foot fern this one they call a button fern. This one has not been doing very, very well, and I noticed that it was uh, the pot. It was in too large of a pot, and the pot was pretty, pretty dry. So I've saturated it really well, and hopefully it'll bounce back. But look at all the different textures, and I think this is going to work exceptional. Exceptional little beauties.
So overall, I really truly couldn't be happier. They make for absolutely outstanding displays. And honestly, I find it a little bit odd that I haven't done this before. These tanks have sat here empty for six, eight months. So we're gonna monitor, make sure that the soil moisture is maintained. And we'll watch and see how these guys develop. So maybe you'll take try your hand. It's basically using almost all the same components that we already use. Just thinking a little bit outside the box, spend some time in nature, and set up your isopods more naturally. So as always, my friends, thank you kindly for watching. Take care.